Hello, well, welcome everybody. My name is Dr. Martin Fry and I'm a lecturer at UCL in medical electronics. T today I'm, I'm going to consider how we walk and also look at electrical stimulation to restore lost function. Okay, so when, when we walk, we, we usually just do it without thinking about it. <laughs> but if we do think about how we walk, then consider my right leg. I'm about to take a step, so I lift the heel off the ground. I then use the muscle on the front of the leg, known as tibialis anterior. That means the muscle in front of the tibia. Tibia, tibialis anterior. To lift my toes, and I then swing the foot, place the heel on the ground, and then I use that muscle again to play, place my toes. Usually we just do that without thinking about it. So, in, in some, some conditions, stuff such as MS, that's multiple sclerosis, and stroke, so sometimes the nerves are, are damaged, and in particular the nerve going to that muscle, tibialis anterior, may be damaged such that the, the person isn't able to lift their toe during walking. So if, if they took a step in the usual manner, they're unable to lift their toes, so they're in danger of tripping over their toes. This condition is known as foot drop, or drop foot, because when you lift the foot off the ground, the foot drops. So various ways of alleviating this condition uh, so someone with foot drop may, may shuffle their feet so that they avoid tripping or they may have an orthosis, a right angled, usually plastic bracket that goes down the back of the leg under the shoe to keep the foot at 90 degrees. So someone with an orthosis will probably swing their hips again to avoid tripping over their toes. There is an alternative technique called functional electrical stimulation that's been used for, for many years now to electrically stimulate tibialis anterior at the right point in the, in the walking cycle, the, the gait cycle. So I will demonstrate I've brought along my director's chair. What I like about this is it has a, a narrow footprint, so I reduce the danger of falling backwards. Okay. So, tibialis anterior. Here's, here's one. I've got another one on the other leg. Um, so, something that you can try on yourselves. If you if you put your fingers over that muscle and lift your toes, you will feel that muscle contracting. So clearly, the function of that muscle is to lift your toes. Right. So I've brought along a a pulse generator that we can use as an electrical stimulator. So. I've also brought a piezoelectric transducer to act like a kind of loudspeaker so that initially we can hear the pulses. I like this device because it has two controls, amplitude and rate or frequency. So if I switch on, you hear the pulses. Uh, these pulses are about 200 microseconds in duration and we can vary the frequency from 1 hertz to about 150 hertz for this device 
and we can vary the amplitude from obviously zero off right up to about 100 volts. So even, even though this device is powered by a, a 9 volt battery, on the output stage of the pulse generator there's a, a little step up transformer to step up 9 volt pulses to about 100 volt pulses. And we need, we need up to 100 volts because in order for the muscle to contract, there's a minimum threshold current that we have to pass through, through the muscle. So it's, it's kind of an application of Ohm's law. Ohm's law voltage equals <coughs> current times resistance. So for a particular resistance that we're passing a current through, if we need a minimum threshold current, there's a minimum voltage that we need to apply. And that may well be up to 100 volts. But hopefully I won't have to apply that much. Okay, so I'm going to take some of these aerogel electrodes, place them at the top of the muscle and at the bottom. And then with this set of leads, with two millimeter plugs and sockets. I can connect the electrodes to the stimulator. Okay, and I'm just gonna sit here, really comfortable, relaxed, um, relaxing all my leg muscles, whilst I switch on the stimulator. So, watch, watch my foot and see what happens. This is, this is kind of like Luigi Galvani's experiment, <laughs> or experiments from, okay. from way back, yeah. Um, in the 1790s, Luigi Galvani found that um, if he had a piece of zinc and copper, uh, and he applied them to uh, dead frogs' legs, the frogs' legs twitched. So this is, well, over 200 years on, a, a version of what Luigi Galvani did, but no, no frogs required. So, um, what's, what's interesting, let's, let's increase the frequency, because you, you might not believe that it's the stimulator stimulating, because I, <laughs> I could sit here going, which, you know, that, that action is under my conscious control. Okay, let's uh, try to demonstrate if... Does it feel really strange? Um, well, obviously I'm giving myself tiny electric shocks, so there's a certain a t t t tingling feeling. But, uh, but actually, this, this particular device was actually first developed as a TENS machine. That's an acronym that stands for transcutaneous, that just means across the skip, electrical nerve stimulation um, as a form of pain relief. So it's a, a curious thing. So if we switch on, this is stimulating at one hertz. It doesn't actually hurt. Bang, bang. But if, if we increase, you got it. Good, great. As you as you increase the, the frequency from one hertz, so that's two. Four, six. See how the twitching increases. That's 10 hertz. When we get to 15 hertz, the muscle is trembling. But when we get to 20 hertz, we've got a nice smooth foot lift. Yeah. So if I if I switch off, my toes go down, and if I switch on. I, I lift, lift the foot. If you leave it on for long enough, you actually get tired. Yeah, it will fatigue the muscle. And in fact, foot drop stimulators actually stimulate the nerve uh, rather than the muscle directly. Yeah, our feet. They, they, they actually they contract uh, all the, the uh, fibers in the muscle, um, so they have 100% recruitment of fibers, and that's why. Um, 
the fatigue uh, happens faster than it does in um, normal uh, contraction because we don't recruit all of our muscle fibers. So we don't really want to stimulate less than 20 hertz, that's not useful. But if we stimulate around 20 hertz, 25, not, not much faster because we'll simply fatigue the muscle more, more quickly. Um, so if we stimulate at that frequency, then we have a way of lifting our toe. Uh, what we could do, we could control that stimulation by a push button switch. So Actually, I'd, I'd like to hammer this around to different people. Have you had a go? Right, so whenever you're ready, but, but in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to look at the photo of Professor Sidney Huss, uh, uh, Russ, sorry, Professor Sidney Russ, whilst you randomly put, push the button. And I'm not looking at you to, so that I don't get any cues or clues. <laughs> yes, Professor Sidney Russ, we believe, was the world's first hospital physicist. 1913, so over a hundred years ago. And all the photos on the wall are in fact the family history of the heads of department of, of this department of medical physics and engineering. Well, obviously, if, if someone with foot drop was supplied with stimulator electrodes, all these cables and a push button, um, and we said, well, when you want to, every time you want to take a step forward, put, push the button, and that's just too much to, to think about. So there are various techniques that have been developed to trigger the stimulator at the correct point. So what, one idea is to have um, a heel switch, or in fact this, this uh, shoe insole has three switches two at the toes, in, inside and outside, and one at the heel. And you can pass this around and have a good look. The, this kind of switch is simply two perpendicular electrode arrays separated by, by those green plastic insulating strips. So when the weight of the body is, is on the sensors, the contacts are shorted out. So it's a simple arm-off switch. But you can also use what are known as force sensitive resistors. So in, in this particular design we have, um, and again you can pass this around to have a good look, um, in this particular design you have interleaved electrodes sitting on a resistive ink base and as the force increases on the sensor, so you measure a reduction in, in the resistance, hence the name, force sensitive resistor. So rather than just giving on off information, that can give um, a, a pressure profile. So rather than an insole with those switches, we, we could have force sensitive resistors to act as as sensors. And in fact, we could have a whole array of force sensitive resistors if we wanted to map, produce a real time video map of people, athletes, walking, r running. And I gather sports shoes manufacturers use those kind of techniques to optimize their, their shoe design. So, um, yeah, if we, if we replace the push button switch. with the force sensitive resistor. Uh, could it make its way oh. back? Yeah, the little one, yeah, great. Thank you. So if I plug in the force sensitive resistor, and th this time imagine that this is mounted on an insole that's been fitted in, into my shoe, that I'm standing so the, the weight of my body is on the sensor. So as soon as I lift my heel off the ground, the 
the sensor detects the change in pressure, turns the stimulator on, stimulates the muscle, lifts the toe so I can swing the foot, and then when I place the heel on the ground, the pressure on the sensor turns the stimulator off. So a simple but quite elegant way of controlling the foot drop stimulator. And and over the years, there have been various research studies to look at how you may uh, trigger the stimulator in, in other ways by perhaps detecting EMG, that's electromyogram signals from, from other muscles in, in order to control the stimulation. <coughs> 